Welcome to the Why Not Podcast with me, Chrissy Hawkins. In a world where everybody always asks why, I'm here to ask why not. I'll be breaking down the mindsets of guests as well as my own in a bid to find out what makes people say why not. Okay, hello guys. So, another interview today. I am just mad for the interviews. But, I have to admit, this idea definitely is because of Yvonne. Right? Because she was the one who championed our hormone episode, which was all about the big P word, the period. And so today, I speak to Ashlyn O'Kelly of AOK Nutrition. Now, we talk all things hormones today. So, we go deep into how the pill affects our body, different uh, effects that you may not know about, or even just all types of contraception. We talk about hormone balances and basically all the stuff that we don't talk about because we're embarrassed. And Ashin has absolutely no problem with this. She absolutely specializes in this. I don't know anyone else who knows more about female hormone health and at all i really don't i've actually learned so much from her page so great interview today so much insights and it's really things that we need to talk about more and we need to know about more and the main reason i ended up learning more and going more into research is not just been like was actually because of vaughn bringing it up in the first place so vaughn if you're listening this episode is inspired by you and also, everybody out there, really listen to this. It's really helpful. It's so informative. As I said, I don't know anyone who knows more about this topic than Ashling. And I hope you guys all enjoy and you learn something from today's episode. Okay, guys, so welcome back to the podcast. Today, I've got Ashling O'Kelly from AOK Nutrition. How are you today, Ashling? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on today. Thank you for coming on. It's great to have you. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Yeah, of course. So basically my background is that I am a nutritionist and I'm also a naturopath as well. I'm also training to become a herbal um, medicine practitioner as well at the moment. Went back to college this year. Um, but the way our clinic works is we're all very much into kind of natural medicine and we get to the root of the problem using things like nutrition, herbs, supplements, probiotics, lifestyle interventions, like looking at exercise and sleep. Um, and over the last couple of years, I've kind of just fallen into the kind of category of dealing a lot with women's hormones and, and um, female nutrition, just because it's kind of an area that I'm quite passionate about. And um, yeah, so that, that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> I think that's uh, something that's slightly coming to the fore now, but I think definitely you're one of those people I've noticed anyway in my feed that is championing the talk of female hormones and how it affects us more than, in a sense, well, definitely affects us more than men. How did you fall into that? I don't know. I think it's kind of just a natural progression. Like I'm, I want everything to be as natural as possible. And I suppose once I started seeing clients, I was seeing the same issues over and over and over again. And the common denominator, like birth control, like being on the pill is such a massive, um, has such a mass effect on your health. And I know when I was kind of on the pill, got back in like my teens, stuff like that wasn't talked about. So kind of, uh, initially it was kind of more the frustration of I was like how do people not know about this like I remember posting probably like two or three years ago now asking on Instagram did people know that the bleed they get on the pill for example isn't a real period like I didn't know yeah. that right and most people don't know that so I think initially it was kind of the drive of shock that kind of got me into because I was like how are we not told this and then over time then I suppose just you know you can help people so much like we see a lot of even women for fertility issues things like PCOS they have no periods no cycles and you can help people so much using nutrition for women hormones so I think that's kind of how I got into it a bit deeper then because I kind of started researching even more then once I started seeing more clients. Yeah I think a lot of people don't really understand when they're going on to the pill or any form of contraception what they're actually in a sense signing up for other than they think won't have kids but do you think people actually understand that they aren't like how do I say how it's actually working how it's yeah exactly that's what I'm yeah, saying definitely not well I don't think so anyway like I know like even again talking to my pals like if you're on going on the pill when you're 18 let's say if you start having sex anyone you obviously don't want to get pregnant you don't really question it like I know the doctor gave me 
pill back in the day and said, look, you need to come back after a couple of months, get your blood pressure checked. And it wasn't really explained, okay, this is how it's working. These are the side effects. This is what you have to look out for. The way contraceptive works, like for example, the pill, is that it switches off ovulation. So an egg doesn't get released every month, which means you've no chance of getting pregnant. But the problem with this is that ovulation is not just for releasing the egg. Ovulation is also for the production of your own hormones. So we have two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, and they massively impact our, our, whole, our whole month. Like anything from even things like your sex drive, your mood, your energy, your appetite, your sleep are hugely impacted by these hormones and they get completely switched off when you're on the pill or the patch or the implant. Um, so that's definitely not something I feel like you need to almost come with terms and conditions when you want to go on the pill that you need to be told, okay, you're gonna, you're not gonna ovulate and these are actually what's gonna happen as well. And women need to be able to make an informed decision then if that's right for them. Yeah, I think a lot of people though, when they go on it young, it's literally the whole, I won't get pregnant. So they don't, they don't really care about the terms and conditions really, do they? It's only when you start to hit our age, when you're starting to think about children, and the effects really come to light isn't it definitely yeah I think a big thing is like I think if you're on my Instagram I always think that people think I'm real anti-pill I'm like you know the pill basher and this kind of thing I'm not at all like I actually think it's such an amazing um form of medicine that I mean if we decide we don't have kids until we're 30 and we want to have sex all the time well isn't amazing we have the opportunity to do that yeah my bigger issue is that it's more so people who are put on the pill maybe 15, 16, 17 for hormonal issues. So like that, I've clients come to me and they're like, oh, I used to have irregular cycles and then the pill fixed it. And they've been on the pill 10 years and they don't realize that the bleed they're getting every month isn't a real period. Or, you know, there's certain people who were, you know, fainting in school or had really heavy painful periods. Like that could have been something like endometriosis, for example, which is um, almost like an inflammatory condition. And that will get really overlooked. So then it's only then like that, you know, people our age kind of 29, 30 who, might want to have kids who just want to come off the pill and they haven't dealt with these issues from years ago and that's more yeah. of an issue that like generally for the people who just are on the pill for um as a contraceptive the side effects aren't massive in terms of for health it's just kind of more like that you understand you're switching off your hormones but it is mm -hmm. my, my concern is more for people who are put on it for a different reason and you find they have a lot of struggles when they come off but the people who've been put on as i said to regulate their hormones and really they haven't actually they've just masked it yeah, I would see that a lot. It kind of depends on the client as well. Like when I see clients, I kind of explain to them what causes your hormones to be out of balance. So like mm -hmm. the first thing we look at is nutrition. Then we look at stress. So we look at poor digestion. And I'm always like, okay, let's compare you now to like 16 year old Chrissy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe you weren't as healthy then. Maybe you didn't exercise. Maybe, you know, your diet was different back then. Like I think as you get older and kind of come into your late twenties, you kind of like, I know, even me, like I'm more plant-based now than I would have when I was a teenager. Like we grew up in like me veg potatoes, like Irish man yeah, every night. You know what I mean? Um, I wouldn't really have much dairy anymore. Where I remember used to drink glasses of milk with dinner. So sometimes oh, conditions, one I didn't do. <laughs> yeah, sometimes conditions can change. Yeah, because you've changed, and again, hormones are very much linked to like most of the time linked to your lifestyle. So it kind of depends on the person. So if anyone's listening and they're absolutely terrified to come off it, and they're com you know, if you really changed since you were kind of 16, 17, chances are your issues might not be as bad now you might just need to kind of you know fix them slightly but it might not be a complete overhaul in your diet yeah do you have a do you actually find any younger clients coming to you now where their parents heard about this and decided to go the nutrition path or are they still just going straight to the doctor yeah we're getting a lot more younger clients it's actually a bit scary to be honest like i had a girl mm -hmm. last week she's only 13 and she has irregular cycles and the gp wants to put her on the pill and it's just that to me is frightening because yeah. first of all, your menstrual cycle isn't fully developed until you're about 18. And mm -hmm. if you were put on the pill at any time before that, well, most of us were, like most of us did go on the pill kind of before that, you know what I mean? In, in school kind of, but if you're putting it up before 18, it can actually slow them in development of your menstrual cycle. And then that can have a knock on effect then when you're kind of, you know, again, like in your kind of adult years trying to get pregnant. Yeah. Also as well, like being that young and going contraceptives, like again, switching off your, your hormones. So a massive thing I see linked with, I think, long-term use of contraceptives is anxiety and poor digestive issues or poor digestive mm -hmm. issues because our hormone progesterone, which is like the second half of your cycle, it's a really, really calming hormone. So it's really good for mood, really good for anxiety. And the first half of your cycle, your project or your estrogen, it's a real like get up and go hormone. So yeah. that's the half of the month you flow with energy, you feel great, you're much stronger, you know, your your sex drive is better. So like I have like 22 year olds who are telling me they've no sex drive. And I'm like, 
you don't know what your sex drive is like because you've been on the pill ever since you started having sex and they're comparing yeah. themselves maybe to their friends not on the pill or they think they're really anxious and I'm like well when's this start and they can almost pinpoint you know I was I was 18 and what went on the year they went on the pill that year and because it's never really is told to them they don't really realize that and um, so that's why I find it scary the most because really young young girls are going on it and again the side effects just aren't explained to them and all of a sudden they think yeah. it's it's their personality and actually could be a side effect of of a drug and that's what it is it's a steroid drug like I know I'm kind of ranting on here but I no no no, go, no continue it's be, good like because we need to get that info yeah because they're called like Yaz, Yasmanel like they sound like your friend from across the road pretty, pretty like, names aren't they yeah that's what I mean it's kind of to make it seem real like you know normal but like if I told you like the actual scientific names it doesn't sound as glam anymore like or do you know that kind of way yeah. that like there are steroid drugs that you're on every day so yeah. it's not to be taken lightly either I don't think do you think the problem is not in like I'm not saying that they're bad and you shouldn't go to them but like a lot of times people's first point of call is the GP and the GP don't have the knowledge in certain things I see it a lot when people who have sports injuries and they tell me oh I can't get rid of this and I'm like did you go to a physio and they go no I went to GP GP gave me told me to, to like tame painkillers and rest and it hasn't gone away and I'm like, why did you go to a GP and not a physio who's literally specializing in this? Do you think that's kind of a, a bit of an issue? Definitely. Yeah. It took me a long time to kind of come to terms with this as well, because I used to get so frustrated. I'd see my clients, like, for example, PCOS. PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome, and yeah. it's too much testosterone in the body, so you don't ovulate. And it causes irregular cycles. Now, if you're not ovulating, surely the worst thing in the world to do would be to give you a pill to stop ovulation. <laughs> yeah. 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 And yes, the pill is given as a I'm gonna put in you can't see me have inverted commas here, treatment for PCOS. So um sorry, what am I talking about? What was my question <laughs> My brain's gone um, blank your ass. Oh sorry, the doctors. Yes. Yeah. So or for example, like that if you're fainting in school from really heavy periods, they give you the pills. So I used to be frustrated because I'm like, this is not a cure, but at the same time, these people are doctors. They want to help people, they have yeah. put thousands and thousands of hours to be where they are they've spent a ridiculous amount of money so it's not their fault when you come in and you need something and all they have to give you is a pill I think it's the system yeah. that's wrong if you're a GP you should have to go back and do modules on female hormones and health and wellness and this kind of so you're able to give your your clients proper advice or you should have someone on hand like someone like me who works with hormone health or a nutritional therapist who can you can redirect the clients onto that because it's very much a lifestyle intervention. Like, you know, the yeah. pill only works so much. People get to give, you know, give them constant for their painful periods, but it comes again the next month. It doesn't fix it. It just helps you get through that day, you know? So I used to be really frustrated and now I just actually, it's more just a bit deflating that like this is the way that society is. And hopefully then by stuff yeah. like doing these podcasts and on my social media that people will kind of take it into their own hands then and like learn to ask questions. And I try to educate people as much as I can to, you know, what to, what to ask when they're with the GP and that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to lie here. I genuinely only know what PCOS is because of your page. I remember you like mentioned it one at a time and I was like, what is that? And like, I never heard of it because obviously it didn't affect me or whatever, but yeah. maybe it does, I don't know. <laughs> but like that, I had no idea what it was. So I actually had to check and find out what the story was like mm -hmm. with it yeah we weren't um, taught this either like I think even like in sixth year in school like girls even lads as well like they should even have a module that's relevant like you probably remember like me like we were in school we did like like, like a sex ed class like talking about like tampons and do you know what I mean it's so irrelevant like yeah or you'd learn about like um we learned about ovulation in biology like it's just again yeah. it's like the ovum releases from the fallopian tube and goes down into the uterus like it's so far from what actually yeah it happens mm. whereas like if you try to break it down actually like okay do you know before you get your period your boobs are in bits okay yeah well and if you explain to people like that people are able to relate to that then so I think yeah. it's just as well it'd be so I think it'd be amazing if they had this kind of in schools that like you know women will be able to understand it long term and again men as well so they can know why maybe sometimes we're a bit different than normal at different parts of the month <laughs> that don't like to hear about that did they <laughs> yeah <laughs> do you think that's just an Ireland problem or I think Ireland is worse than other countries, definitely. Like Ireland, you know, how long? Six years ago, even longer, was contraceptives even legal? You know what I mean? Like we're oh so God. we're so behind in terms of sexual health and sexual mm -hmm. awakening because the Catholic Church literally, you know, um, we're still ruled, living in ruled, the shadow. Yeah, exactly. They ruled the country. Sex was so taboo. So, like, 
most girls I would see, like I asked like their family history. So I'm like, you know, did your granny ever suffer with your period, their periods? And she'd be like, God, I haven't a clue. If they did, they definitely didn't talk about it. Oh, you know what I mean? There's no way. my granny mentioned anything like that. This is what I mean. They'd be absolutely mortified. So like, yeah. again, I mentioned earlier, a thing called endometriosis, which is a very painful inflammatory condition. And it's usually genetic. But some girls I see, like, they don't know whether their granny had endometriosis and even their mum mm. might be a little bit reluctant. And especially going back to kind of granny days, like I know my my nana had um, eight kids and my dad's yes. mum had 11 kids. So like she, they would have been pregnant for most of their, yeah. their kind of fer fertile years or breastfeeding. So they probably had way less periods than we did anyway. Does that, do you know what mm. I mean? So they probably never knew. Yeah, or else it's just, it was just shut up and put up. Like, it's just, you know, mm. you can't be complaining about your period when you have to make your husband's dinner, you know? <laughs> so I do think, yeah, I do think Ireland's quite slow to kind of yeah. um, move on to it. Like, and even, like, I know from chatting to people, even our age, Chrissy, like, I'd be asking people about cervical mucus or I see a lot of fertility and I'm asking about when they're having sex and people are so embarrassed to talk about it. Now, obviously, I'm so used to because it's my yeah. job, but I'm like, la, 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 how's your cervical mucus? And people are like, oh my God. But it's, I think the more we talk about it, the less kind of uncultural people be about it i i can hands up say i was definitely one of those people because as me and yvonne when we were doing this did do a podcast about it and i was like no you can talk about it <laughs> i've started to come around a bit more and i really think it's when you if i can turn it into an inform information thing you, yeah. when you take the emotion out of it it's like okay right now i'm actually interested in learning about it because it affects so much like and training yeah. and life in general and some people are just absolutely floored when it comes and other people mm -hmm. are like you know it's over before they even notice like yeah especially for you with clients like I'm sure you might have seen you do personal training wouldn't you yeah. like week to week so I'm sure you'd see even some weeks people were brilliant a few weeks earlier and all of a sudden their their lifts aren't as heavy or their moves not great or yeah and that could literally just be that they're just about to get their period and literally yeah. before you ovulate like you're actually stronger than before you get your period so that's two mm -hmm. weeks before that so it's it'd be definitely important for you as a, as a PT, like understanding how women's cycles works and asking them where they are in their cycle, because even things like your weight, it can definitely affect your weight as well. Like when you're yeah. just before you get your period, you're often carrying a lot of water. So if you had someone who feels like they're doing really, really well with nutrition and they're, you know, sticking to the workouts and they're not losing weight and they're actually up the walls, it literally could just be PMT and that's it. And they'll be yeah. fine in a couple of days time. I have actually, I've actually had that before and I have kind of been like, well, and they're like, you know still trying to convince them that don't worry this this is normal i saw as well uh you saying before that you should change the pill every is it two years or something i think you should change like one you're on like you should go to different you shouldn't be on the same ones for it depends how well it's suiting you like there's certain yeah. ones like yasmin yaz dinette they're quite strong pills you're not really meant to okay. be on them for more than like i'd say a year i've seen some, some clients on them for five or six years though um, just because they're quite strong. Generally, the smaller ones, like something like Microlite, is kind of safe to be on long term. Um, okay. What I kind of recommend every so often, if you're on the pill 10 years, it'd be worth it taking a break, even for two months, just to see if your period comes back. Mm. Because, like, I have people email me and they'd be like, hey, like, I'm hoping to get pregnant in May. Like, I'm going to come off the pill then. And I'm like, if you could come off the pill, it might not, you might not get your period back for 10 months. And that kind of pushes these pregnancy plans out the window. Which, you know, yeah. so I think it's, it's good every so often just to kind of check in, just to make sure everything's still working there, just to give yourself enough time down the line if that's something that you want to do okay yeah that, that makes sense all right so as you said you do a lot you do a lot of natural interventions and stuff so what kind of non-medical interventions do you think could help do you use even or do you find helps regulate cycles or ease symptoms well first of all to understand why hormones become unbalanced right so we have two halves per cycle we have our estrogen phase and we have our progesterone phase the estrogen phase is that first two weeks after you get your period actually from the day you get your period up until the day you ovulate and it's generally like i always say after you get your period you feel so much better for after kind of day one day two your mood mm -hmm. is better your sex drive kicks in your energy is better you're stronger your appetite's better and basically this is the balance you want the first half of the month and the second half of the month then is your progesterone phase and progesterone is kind of more for like I said earlier calming hormone really good for pain really good for anxiety mm -hmm. it also pins the uterine lining so basically it pins your periods your periods not too heavy okay so we always want the balance of these two hormones and unfortunately any kind of PMT so PMT again is things like um sore boobs breakouts anxiety, um, low mood, headaches, sugar cravings, insomnia before you get your period. It's always a lack of progesterone. Okay. So you don't have enough of that second hormone in the second half of your cycle. And the number one reason why progesterone is low is because stress steals progesterone. Okay. So, <laughs> we've all been there. And I would say to clients, your period's always worse when you've had an absolute mental month. It's not as bad. Like if you're on holidays and got your period, it's like, oh yeah, I forgot I was getting that. 
So when I see clients, it's always about balancing out those two hormones. Another reason why progesterone is too low is that estrogen is too high in the other half of the cycle. Yeah. And estrogen is massively affected by things like your, your diet. So for example, too much cow's milk in the diet can increase estrogen. That can make your periods too heavy or too much soy in the diet or a lot of things called xenoestrogens. And these are from our environment, like our fake tans and readers and plastic bottles and perfumes and cosmetics and products. They come into the body and they mimic estrogen and they can also cause a bit of havoc, right? Yeah. The other thing that causes havoc in your body is if you suffer with constipation. And most women I would see who suffer with periods will be a little bit constipated. Like I kind of okay. considered anything less than once a day. So this is what we look at first. We look at the balance of those two things. Okay, mm -hmm. do you have too much estrogen? Are you up the walls? Do you have so much stress? And then we, we use different things to balance these things out. So for example, the stress side of things, like you probably used magnesium before, like that's yeah. an amazing so for things, obviously like your muscle soreness, it's really good for cramps, but it's really good for anxiety. And um, you have things like B vitamins, which would be great. Then we also use herbal medicine as well. So I kind of said earlier, I'm trying to be herbalist at the moment. My mum is a herbalist. So like we have like 300 different herbal tinctures in our clinic. They're all for different things. Yeah. So what we do for clients is we make up personalized tonics. So like in one bottle, say for example, like my wad seen you and you hormone issues, I can put in herbs for heavy periods, PMT, sore boobs, cramps, yeah. energy, reduce estrogen, increase progesterone, like all in one bottle, literally like a unitonic and herbs are just amazing for hormones as well so that's kind of our approach it's kind of i always call it like a little sea sauce just by getting the sea back into balance basically and then i mentioned earlier like with digestion supporting constipation and supporting detoxification pathways so like a big thing here is liver support so using herbs like have you ever done milk thistle before i have not milk thistle is a herb that we would often give for the liver and you can't take it if you're on any medication like the pill or anything but that's, that's really, right. really good yeah <laughs> i really, remember really reading good. that i was like oh interesting then you really can't have yeah. it on the pill i was like well that's me yeah so you can't take it if you're on that um but liver support is really good like you could be you know have no dairy if you're on literally like a vegan diet but if your detoxification pathways aren't working efficiently now i hate the word i don't mean like a green juice detox so I yeah. do that on instagram like literally obviously your body's detoxing the whole time it's just more helping the pathways that it's mm -hmm. they're working as efficiently as we possibly can um so that again is it in a nutshell <laughs> that's like the short version but to be honest as well chrissy like i always first thing I see explaining to clients when I see them is kind of that process a little bit more detail with them but yeah. I'm like if you understand how your hormones work you will always know how to stay on top of things and yeah. it's the same process whether you're 13 and you just got your period or whether you're 45 and you're you're perimenopausal it's this mm -hmm. exact same process it's just understanding what you need to do to keep on top of that estrogen progesterone balance have you found just this kind of a sign on the herb list has anyone been a bit like funny about that or are they kind of oh my god yeah point? all the time the herbal yeah. tonics yeah defo like they taste horrible I'm always like right coming a warning I was like these do not taste do, do they kind of be like that's a bit hippie now is that gonna work or yeah kind of like I think I kind of know by the client like we obviously mm. love supplements as well um if it's completely brand new to someone like their diet is awful and they don't even take any supplements and it's just you know they saw me on Instagram they just booked in and they don't like some people come to me and they're kind of into natural medicine that's kind of why they follow me so yeah. I kind of gauge by the client and then down the line like I try might use herb or use nutrition and supplements first and I might use herbs as a second step yeah some people think it's mad but I'm like just trust me like the thing about it is sometimes my clients is people I think a lot of people do trust me when they're booking in that it's like yeah I'm not just like they a lot most people now find me through Instagram as well they've watched my videos they know what I'm like that they kind of know I'm not this kind of like you at witch doctor like, like <laughs> definitely kind, not that no. yeah kind of thing so I think people do trust my recommendations um and I'm and I've explained and I'm like look this is what this does kind of give them as much information as I can but yeah defo like there are some people who they might be like oh I never took the herbs and that kind of thing it's just you just you know to gauge it with each client kind of I think that's so would like, you take yeah. herbs <laughs> <laughs> I do not know <laughs> for no other reason that I've actually never been kind of exposed to it but I would yeah. take like different supplements like when you mentioned magnesium like I would mm. take like that every night and you are on the pill now are you yeah and how long have you been on it for good question I've lost count <laughs> well I wouldn't say I'd say maybe yeah uh, maybe four or five years maybe slightly more and for contraceptive is that the main reason you went on to it yeah yeah and I've never had any issues with cycles yeah. which is one good thing I suppose that's the, yeah that's what I mean for someone like you like you're just on it and get pregnant I'm like power to you that's absolutely perfect right yeah. the kind of terms conditions I would give for clients in your position though is I'm like the pill reduces b vitamins 
and B vitamins are really important for energy, for yeah. mood, right? So I always recommend anyone the pill takes a B complex. The pill also reduces zinc absorption and zinc yeah. is really important for skin. That's kind of, I would say like the vanity side of things, your zinc is your skin, your hair, your nails. Oh, my skin is awful. Yeah, really I do important. actually take zinc and B vitamins actually, surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, for someone who doesn't talk about it much, I did actually research on these things and find out. Oh yeah, very good. Yeah. The, the zinc, you might take a stronger dose of zinc. I'll, I'll talk to you about it after we're off the call because I don't want to give people advice over this. Um, <laughs> but the, the zinc is really, really important. Even for, for your immune system, I say like the vanity point of view is your skin, like one to look obviously good, but yeah. zinc makes up your white blood cells. So it's very, very important for immune response, even things people suffer with heavy periods, painful periods, zinc is your go-to. A lot of people don't realize they could put on the pill like that like eight years and they're blocking zinc the whole time. So yeah. it's really important to take zinc. And the other thing is actually probiotics as well, that the pill depletes gut health. So okay. if you're on long-term use of the pill, you're going to deplete a lot of your healthy bacteria in your gut. And again, like I see clients, they develop, develop IBS in their late 20s out of nowhere. And it's just okay. because they're slowly depleting gut health every single day from being on the pill. So they're my three go-to for anyone on contraceptives. What kind of probiotics would you um, recommend? Biocult is a great one that you can get in shops, the capsule. Mm. Um, I use one, you can get it on our online shop actually, it's called Merlac and Merlac yeah. is a liquid, it's quite strong, it's really good actually. And it's not that expensive, it's only like 15 euro for a month supply of it. And my mum's used that for years, it's funny that like when I qualified in 2014, my mum's doing this now 30 years, so I qualified and I was like, man, like you're so old fashioned, like she's used Merlac for donkey's years. Yeah. And I'm like thinking I know everything and I'm straight out of college and I'm just so much better ones, blah, blah, blah. So I tried loads of other ones. And I just was like, to be honest, I actually haven't found one that's as good as this. So I'm on the Merlac now with all my clients. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've heard of Simproof. Have you heard of that supplement or probiotic? No. It's very Instagram. A lot of like the bloggers are kind of promoting Simproof. Oh, okay. It's an amazing probiotic, but it's about 100 euro a month. It's so expensive. Yeah. The liquid. So I've gotten a few of my clients to trial Simproof and to trial the Merlac. And they don't notice much of a difference for me to be oh, charging okay. 100 euro a month versus 15 euro a month. You know that way? So... You should try the Merlac, definitely, if you're not on a probiotic, um, yeah. definitely try it and see. Yeah, it'd be really I beneficial. Kefir from time to time, because I actually oh, have yeah, brilliant. it inside, yeah, but that's Do you make it? Yeah. Oh my god, unreal, well done. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is I end up leaving it for like two weeks, and then when I try to do it, it's like this really vicious yogurt, very strong, like, that'd I mix it in with stuff. That'd be so good. I always admire people who make their own kefir and hummus and things. I'm like, I just, like, I, could, I even kill plants in my house. I'm just a disaster, like, anything around me. So my kefir always dies. And <laughs> that's brilliant. Though. That's even better than taking a supplement. Like, we should be eating fermented foods. Like, we yeah. shouldn't need supplements from anything. Nobody in Ireland is eating fermented foods. Like, you're sour Unless crazy, you're can. Yeah, exactly. Like, we're really not. <laughs> uh, so I think supplements are great to take alongside everything yeah. else. But if you're on your kefir, you'll be fine. <laughs> just to... Just to remind people there they don't include alcohol in the fermented food yes. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is bad for the gut health isn't it yeah <laughs> do you find people who are on the pill of contraception well probably it will be with pill more so because you have your like bleed every month do they still suffer from pmt yeah so i think by calling a pmt it's the wrong word like pmt mm. is premenstrual tension it yeah. happens before you get your period i do think it's like a side effect of being on the pill that's what i would yeah. call it and it's similar it's the buildup of hormones in the body so like if you think about it if you start getting sore like what i'm obviously not on the pill for a good few years like what would be your symptoms would you be kind of getting like pmt in inverted commas before you come off have your week break kind of more the, the you know when you come off and it takes a couple of days for it to kick in but yeah. I, that's I'm, I'm I'm assuming that's just a hormone drop as well like but it kind of yeah. is those kind of I'm tired I'm a little yeah. bit like Ugh. yeah um, I kind of so, wonder yeah. with that like is it like obviously the hormone drop is going to be part of it but also like is some of that kind of thing could be psychosomatic because you're like well I'm at the end of it this is what happens when you get a period it's in your head that's going to happen like yeah I think it's two things so I think part of it is the build up of hormones like if you think about it you're taking the pill it's every day for say 21 days mm -hmm. so on day 21 you've taken it 21 days in a row so something like sore boobs or something like that might kick in yeah. um and then definitely when you stop taking it you get a dip in hormones and your mood can crash you can get other symptoms like people say oh i'm so bad you know it's before my period i'm like no you're just that's just your body missing the artificial hormones so it's a little bit different yeah. um so yeah genuinely i'd say it's just a side effect of of coming off the pill for the few days i actually saw well previously it was a thing where they obviously they were like make sure you take your month break I think it's don't leave it more than three months or something like that 
and now they're sort of saying like with the pills you don't actually have to take that week break Mm -hmm. is that true or it was probably still better taking the break yeah no that is true I I don't know how true this is I read this a few different um times in different places but basically the reasoning behind the whole week break on the pill is to make you feel like you're having a normal period Okay. And it goes actually back to the Catholic Church that people didn't know then that you were on the pill because you were still getting a bleed. So it's, do you know that I mean, obviously contraception yeah, yeah. is just really like, you know, frowned upon. So you have your three weeks and your week bleed to make it seem normal. So there's no reason why you need to actually take a break. Like even some clients who come to me, they want to come off the pill. I'm like, okay, perfect. So just stop taking your pill now tomorrow. And they're like, oh, but, but I have like another, you know, two and a half weeks left. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. You can stop taking that anytime. It's not like, you yeah. have to get to an end point you can just stop it so yeah definitely um you can definitely just continue to take it if that's what you want to do a lot of people take it back to back if they have a holiday or something they don't have mm. a bleed on the only thing is that that can happen is you can actually get spotting so the reason why you still get a bleed when you're on the pill a lot of people don't really understand this because they're like okay i'm not ovulating so where is the blood coming from right so basically mm. normally when you're normal cycle when you're ovulating that first half of your cycle, your estrogen will thicken your uterine lining. So your, your hormones tell your body, okay, start making the thickening of the uterine lining. So if we get pregnant when we ovulate, the egg is something to bury into. That's basically how it works. Yeah. Okay? Now, when you're off the pill, where is the blood coming from, right? And what's happening is it's a synthetic form of estrogen in the pill causing mm-hmm. that uterine lining to thicken, right? So it's that's where the blood coming from. Now, usually it's not going to be as heavy as your normal cycle because it's not coming from, you know, it's, it's very... Uh, it's a very, what's what I'm looking for, like regulated dose. Yeah. But what can happen is long term, if you don't take a break, the way I describe it to clients, it's like as if you're filling up a water balloon and you're constantly filling it for, say, like three months without taking a break. Eventually it's going to burst. Or okay. eventually bits are going to start. So a lot of people might be doing, taking the pill back to back and they're kind of getting spotting during the month, not really sure why. And it's just like your uterine lining can't hold all that in, has to shed yeah. eventually. Okay. People who are on things like the progesterone only pills, you've heard of the mini pill before? Yeah, the mini pill or um, the marina coil or the implant, those three things, they work differently to the combined pill. OK, mm-hmm. so they don't have any estrogen in them at all or synthetic form of estrogen. They have a hormone called progesterone. Now, this is not to be mixed up with our own hormone progesterone, right? Our own hormone progesterone is amazing for our mood, for our energy. Progesterone pins the uterine lining, so it makes your period lighter. That's the only um, similarity between progesterone and progesterone is that it pins the uterine lining. Okay. Yeah. So when you're on something, for example, like the implant, it's meant to work that it pins that uterine lining. So there's nothing there. You're not like a lot of people don't get any bleed at all on like, the mini pill. And this is why because there's yeah. no estrogen growing the uterine lining. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 But what can happen sometimes, like I mentioned earlier, environment also increases estrogen. So yes, your body's not making any, but you might be getting estrogen coming in from poor digestion, from too much cow's milk, from too much soy, from your fake tans, from your shampoos, from your plastics. And that's actually thickening the uterine lining anyway. Okay. And the synthetic form of progesterone isn't strong enough then either to hold it in. Yeah. And you get, you get spotting them. Does that make sense to some people? Yeah, like, that's mad actually. Yeah, it's really, really common. And people don't really know why. And I've seen people and like they're going back and they're just switching pills and taking this and that's never really explained to them why it's actually happening so it's, it's very much lifestyle related and you'll find it more so with women who were putting the pill for heavy periods because the yeah. heaviness was never addressed it was never looked into why your period's heavy it was just okay let's fix it but generally these people will always get spotting on contraceptives okay if you're actually as well if you're on any forms of contraception like because it's kind of change in your hormone structure or syn- synthesizing it i remember it was probably a bit of a blunt way of saying it, but they were like, it kind of makes it a bit more like a guy when it comes to training, because, you know, like there's different ways of training through the phases. But if you're constantly on a certain level, does mm-hmm. that make it, does that, is that in a sense kind of true or will it affect the way you train? Or Yeah, I, I suppose I've actually never thought about it like that before. Mm. That like, again, when you're on contraceptive, your hormones are regulated, you're mm-hmm. like, basically flatline though it's not like they're through the roof and you feel amazing you're you're the lower level of of normal yeah um so possibly but then also though the thing that makes you like again when you're ovulating you probably i suppose you're actually on the way i was gonna say you feel it yourself so you actually probably don't know but coming for, for example like i love training as well like i know i'm stronger when i ovulate and yeah it's absolutely you do such a deadly workout so for you hitting targets hitting personal best getting stronger would actually be more of 
a struggle for you because your own yeah. hormones aren't at play there you know that kind of way yeah. um so you might not get worse but I think you probably struggle you might not have days where you're weak because there's no you know not not until before your cycle you're gonna have a progesterone deficiency yeah. but I don't know I, I suppose I've never really looked into it before but really yeah, it's kind you of a curveball something guinea pig. I'm reminded of yeah down the line Chrissy whenever you come off the pill you can be a little guinea pig and compare your <laughs> pre-pill workouts to your post-pill workouts and see if you uh you're stronger yeah. It's, it's it's funny to try and to try and work it out because like obviously you know you're saying it depletes B vitamins and stuff like that as well which are energy and I know my training isn't always great but I think that's lifestyle because of the way I work because my training is like it's improving right now because I don't I have the sleep I have the mm. the time to do it so it's really hard to gauge sometimes I think we forget different factors like you said lifestyle factors people are like oh I had a shit training session like okay well what did you sleep well did you eat yeah. properly <laughs> you know 100%. how close are you to your period yeah the, the period's only one issue like it's only yeah. one factor and like you could have no PMT but your sleep is crap and your diet's crap and your training still won't be great like it's a whole holistic approach and you have to be consistent with it as well. Do you know, kind of way you can't, you can have good months and bad months. I would say trying to period like your monthly report card. <laughs> it tells you like how good or how bad you've been that month. And it's normal because again, if you've had just a mental month, like you can kind of expect your period not to be great. Yeah, definitely. Well, I don't know, mine's kind of similar, obviously. But from what I've heard from people who are not on the pill, yeah. I've kind of gotten the, you know, you get a little bit from stuff like that and you get that kind of like, like you said, you know, when you're ovulating, like I have friends mm -hmm. like that, they're like, oh, that's what it is <laughs> yeah the only thing I suppose we haven't talked about is non-hormonal contraceptives that like say for example in your position like you're on it so you don't want to get pregnant but mm. what if you want to come off the pill now to ovulate and like a lot of a, a lot of people again our age like I would say like we're very much like guinea pig generations as well like our parents our mums weren't on the pill for 15 years so yeah a lot of people now kind of especially maybe just my clients come to are kind of realizing that and they want to come off the pill but obviously they're not ready to have kids yet so looking at an alternative option is also really important so to be honest there's crap options out there like there's, there's no one that's like better you know the best one that has no yeah. side effects the most common one would be the copper coil which is like a copper rod that gets inserted into the cervix and it works as a contraceptive because it impair sperm motility so basically sperm is not going to get very far if that copper rod is in there basically <laughs> i can't but imagine yeah exactly but it doesn't stop ovulation so you actually get a period every single month you make your own hormones um and i do think it's the best option yeah um, the only way the copper is copper and zinc compete for absorption so i've already mentioned how important zinc is so anyone on the copper coil needs to supplement with zinc and then another little disclaimer on top of that, if you're someone who's like vegan or vegetarian and has quite low iron um, intake in your diet, you kind of yeah. need to be careful of zinc because zinc and iron can be for absorption. So it's tricky to kind of get that balance. Oh, okay, um, but yeah. if you're someone who's a good diet, like, you know, balanced diet, I should say, sorry, and you are on the copper coil, I definitely would just recommend taking a zinc supplement just to balance that out. Another form of non-hormonic contraceptive is, have you seen me talk about natural cycles before? yes yes i've heard of that actually yeah yeah so like the big thing is i actually have a post just going up in a few minutes on instagram saying remind you that you can only get pregnant for six days of the whole month right again yeah. this is not something that we learned in school or definitely wasn't drilled into us the way we think it should i think it should have been like yeah i know definitely i thought i could be pregnant any time in the month like i remember do you know what i mean you'd be freaked like having sex and you get your period two days later and like oh my god thank god but if you had a known like if you have sex after you ovulate there is no possibility you can get pregnant because the egg is gone you only release one yeah. egg every cycle so that's another easy way to track um to a normal natural contraceptive is track your cycle that like you know you have your period you have a few kind of days after your period before you're, you're fertile that you can kind of have more protective sex and what happens is then you say if you're a regular 28 day cycle you're ready you ovulating day 14 okay yeah the egg lives for 24 hours but the catch 22 is that sperm lives for five days okay <laughs> so of course it is <laughs> yeah so if you have sex on day 14 but you've also had sex on day 10, let's say, a few days before that. Okay. The sperm might still be alive and you can still get pregnant. So it's like being careful the six days before ovulation, right? Yeah. And then once you ovulate, you're grand for the rest of the month, basically, right? Would, now, you, say, would you say that's why people think that you can get pregnant any time of the month because 
the sperm could have been just buzzing around there. <laughs> but even if you have sex on day 20 of the month, the sperm only lives to day 25. Like yeah. you're not going to, and you're not going to ovulate for two weeks after that. So it's only the five days before, do you know what yeah. I mean? So this is something I really try and help my client understand. But someone is saying in your position who just thought of that is probably absolutely terrifying because you haven't had your own cycle in years. You don't know when you're ovulating. It's so foreign to them. <laughs> yeah. Like I feel like I know my cervical me goes, oh, I'm ovulating tomorrow. Like it's because I've obviously been off the pill for so long. Obviously this is my job. Yeah. But basically long way of saying natural cycles is a thermometer and it's linked to an app on your phone. Okay. And it's literally science. It's the only like FDA approved, like non-hormonal contraceptive. So it's gone through clinical testing. It's not just me being like, you know, check your cervical mucus and hopefully you're fine. Like this is like <laughs> science based. Yeah. And the way it works is you take your, your body temperature every single morning with like a basal thermometer. So it's really, really accurate. You do your first thing when you wake up, you log it into the app. And what happens is your temperature is lower the start of the month. Mm-hmm. And once you ovulate, it slightly increases. So it's a way you can track to see if you've ovulated or not. And with the app, you can say whether you want to track, you want to plan a pregnancy or prevent a pregnancy. It takes about two months to kind of learn your cycle. And then yeah. once you know your cycle, it will tell you in advance your red days. You're like, don't have sex today because you're going to ovulate in a few days. Do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. Yeah. It's really yeah, good. That's it's really like an good. ad for a natural cycle. <laughs> but, um, I'm not like paid for them or anything like that, but it's uh But if they want to sponsor you. <laughs> if they want to sponsor me, they definitely can. Oh my god, I've sent them enough clients, that's for sure. But um it's just I think it's such a good like tool, even if you're just someone who wants to learn the cycle a little bit better, because um it will help you track ovulation. Or if you're someone who's trying to get pregnant and you're not sure when you're ovulating, you're taking you can get ovulation strips where basically like you pee on them and it detects you're meant to do it though around when you think you're going to ovulate so it's very difficult okay. if someone has a really long cycle and i'm not really sure when they're ovulating and they're wasting all their money on, on ovulation sticks and getting the negative and being really disheartened that doing something like natural cycles is kind of a better way just you know take your temperature every day and just put it in the back of your head and the app will tell you then once you've ovulated instead of kind of you know doing the, the peeing on the stick on every single day yeah so that'd be re- that's another option as well for anyone listening is natural cycles i have a highlight saved on my instagram on natural cycles if you want to go on yeah. and have a little look at it if you want more info on it definitely it sounds like probably one of the best and um i feel like we get the raw deal with all the contraceptives oh my god <laughs> like, it's 2021 how is there nothing better than what is offered like yeah. mad it's actually and the easiest option would just be to take something for lads to kill sperm like hmm. the, the production of sperm doesn't affect hormone production do you know what i mean so yeah i could say like you you get like um what's it called a vasectomy vasectomy yeah. doesn't affect testosterone production so why men have not just been given that is absolutely beyond me whereas our release of our egg does affect our hormones yeah. it's just such an easy give a man a pill that stops sperm production for a couple of like whenever and the minute you come off it increases it starts again it's just bizarre that, that isn't a thing i think as lads we just wouldn't take it do you know what I mean? that's it like isn't it like you can't trust the lads to do it they'd forget yeah. whereas girls be like I'm the one who's carried the baby. I'm not bloody well forgetting this. Or even I think the side effects, like if I say to a lad, okay, take this pill. Now, what could happen is it might kill off your sex drive. You might feel really anxious on it. You might actually change digestive issues. Um, your mood by, might be a little bit flat and you have to take it every day or we might get pregnant. They would literally look at you and be like, are you joking me? Why in God's name would I take that? And yeah, we do it to ourselves every day. Do you know but they don't mean? tell us though. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> that's the thing, we're doing it, but we don't know why. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when you look at it that way, it's like, yeah, it's mad that we even put up with it. Like, you know, yeah. but hopefully, you know, the next couple of years, things will change. Like the pill was created, I think in like the 19, I'm going to say 1960s. It could be more than that even. And it hasn't really changed since then. Like they kind of yeah. came up with it. Like it hasn't really developed in terms of how it works since the first time it, it was made. Yeah. Surely by now they can up with something better than <laughs> we got it right now, we'll just leave it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think uh yeah, I think that covers everything. Um I want to say thanks again for coming on. And no problem. do you want to tell everyone where they can find you? Because you've mentioned your Instagram a few times there. Yeah, of course. So if you need any more information, my Instagram is AOK Nutrition and you can pop me a message over there or you can email me as well. Um and the link is on my page. Thank Perfect, you so much you? for having me on. It's great to have a chat. My favourite subject. I could talk to this name all day. So thank you so much for having me. <laughs> and you, you have so much knowledge on it as well. Like that's why I was like, you are the person to ask about this kind of thing. Thank you. And as ever, guys, you can always find me on Instagram. It's Chrissy H Fitness, and also on TikTok is Chrissy H Fitness as well. So Instagram for the information, and TikTok for me at Nijit. But <laughs> well, uh, yeah, so thanks again, Ashin. And thank you.
Thank you again for listening to Why Not. Please hit that subscribe button or leave a review. And if you have any suggestions or feedback, feel free to hit me up on social media.